everybody. This is Ernie Hatmaker. Okay, you guys, check out these crazy ants. They built tunnels on top of the ground, but underneath the ground. I don't know, it's like maybe a quarter inch under the ground. All these holes here, there's ants going all the way through these tunnels. That I mean, right on top of the ground. And it is going all the way out. Underneath, I don't know, the mulch maybe. That's crazy. Who would like an ant farm? I don't even know what kind of ants these are. But that is nuts. They're building this long tunnel right here. We're going to get some diatomaceous earth um, out of the shed and take care of that. But you are going to get fired. I'm trying to do some uh, um, fall bed uh, creating again. This bed was tilled um, this last season. And I had some, uh, not chickpeas, uh, crowder peas growing in rows here. And the soil was kind of weird, so we're just going to do a little bit different this time. And what I plan on doing is this dirt that was down here, I'm, you know, going to add a few more uh, bags to it. Some of the compost that we made earlier in the year, um, toward the, the bottom anyway, is, you know, is kind of ready. So we're going to throw a little bit of that on top, but we're going to add a little more dirt. And then I'm going to um, seed some Georgia Crayol Southern Collards in this bed here. Now this is a roll of uh, brown paper. It's the kind that you buy for um, like if you're going to paint your walls or something like that. It's yeah, it's, it's similar to craft paper, but uh, um, it's not as strong as craft paper. Um, and you can see the green, uh, what do you call that, eco uh, plastic or whatever over there. Of course, it's, you know, not disintegrated yet. But uh, I'm just going to, I don't know, comparing it would be stupid because this stuff will dissolve a lot faster. But it should get rid of the few weeds that are left underneath in time for my collars to break through with their roots. Um, but we'll be dropping those seeds probably tomorrow morning um still got to go get that other dirt to to add to it and it is burning off the last of the the corn stalks that were um yeah they were cut a week ago and needed to dry out hopefully there's nothing living under it that might hiss or bite i don't see anything So anyway, this bed um, is going to just be um, direct seeded, sewn um, Georgia Crayole collards. I'm not going to put them in rows. I'm just going to kind of, you know, drop a few seeds, you know, here or there, you know, try to space them out a little bit. But other than that, I'm going to let them do what they do in this particular bed here. Now, these brandywine tomatoes are kind of mixed up with a little bit of ragweed in there. And some of the ragweed is already kind of seeding. I see some chickweed in there too. So, we couldn't get to that with the weed eater without getting hold of the brandywine tomatoes. And I don't know what's going to happen because they took so long to come up. I don't know if the frost is going to get them. Um, there has only been one tomato on all of these. There's flowers, so we may actually get some tomatoes before the frost. But, yeah, this, this dirt just was not, you know, built up enough, I guess. Um, this land had soybeans, and then it rested for a year before we planted, so that might have something to do with it also. It's just too hostile for tomatoes. We may try something else, because, I mean, the peas kind of did okay here so it may you know be that something that the uh, soybean seeds were treated with stopped this from growing or maybe tomatoes and soybeans just aren't good companion plants I don't know 
it also doesn't help that there are weeds all down through here. Seems like the soil is perfect for weeds. Hostile or not, they're growing. And while we're over here, Ed has cleared the wildfire, wildfire. <laughs> I hope there's not a wildfire. He cleared the wildflower bed of um, some of the weeds and now you can see that we've got rooster combs and celosia kind of throwing out, you know, their own little brand of vigilante justice, although it might be too late. It's also grass all in this path. So what um, we're planning on doing is the bed where the uh, strawberries didn't grow, we're going to um, scoop up the topsoil of that and kind of build this bed back up um, and reseal it. Maybe, maybe not so deeply, but cultivated enough to get some more uh, greens thrown in there. And they will be in rows. Uh, it'll be a little easier. And then for this next season, what we plan on doing where all the corn was, and you can see where the grass is coming up in rows, that's actually where the corn was. And all the, the mulch that's in there. Um, I'm thinking we'll, we'll uh, rake the mulch back and put cardboard underneath and restart that, get that bed ready for the corn for next season. I might plant some kind of uh, sugar and snap peas in that, you know, something that'll be good for the winter or I might just do kale, I, I really haven't decided. Speaking of sugar ants, you can see that my sugar ants snap peas, um, some of them didn't exactly stay in a straight row, but there were supposed to be um, three distinct rows. And you can see toward the end over there, I've got a little bit of, of Swiss chard coming up down there. And I just, that's a, just a couple Swiss chard and a couple uh, collard green seeds thrown in. Um, and I don't know, you know, I just like to see what'll grow with what. I don't, I don't know. I want to see what I can get out of them. Um, so that's what I've got there. And through this middle here, I don't know if the seeds just didn't come up or if something ate them before they had a chance to grow. Actually, I do see. I see right now. Look at that. That's the seeds right there. They, I guess, got left out in the sun. Some kind of way they got uncovered. That's why they didn't grow. But you can see they're way over here. And look at this one. There's one here, too. So, yeah. So, some of the seeds just didn't come up. It wasn't that they moved. They just didn't grow. Now, in case you wondered about the A-frames, I've got my second growing of strawberries coming out. I actually have uh, flowers again in these uh, June ever-bearing strawberries. Over here, where the squash was in this A-frame, I um, also planted um, nasturtium, and it's starting to come out now. This is a vining nasturtium, so I'm hoping it does its thing. We have not planted anything else in these two A-frames here. One reason was because wasps had started, you know, building a nest. And so we just wanted to kind of wait that out. 